right, thanks for staying with us right here on Sunrise as we continue, of course, uh, this uh, Thursday morning. Something to really consider. Between the 17th till the 23rd of September, it is National Child Passenger Safety Week. At least 85% of children in South Africa travel without safety belts. According to the Medical Research Council, child passenger deaths are the fourth leading deaths in our country. This morning, we take a look at child safety and how can we prevent it. Now, to elaborate more on this, uh, we're now joined in studio. Uh, we'll be coming in shortly, rather, by the Joburg MMC of Public Safety, Michael Sun, and also the founder of Wheel Well, Peggy Mars. Remember, you can be part of our conversation by giving us a call on 011-447-1742 or 11 447 -1620. Your comments are also welcome on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Now, the question is, why are you not buckling up your children? Why uh, are parents not putting seatbelts on their children? And what is your experience with that? So make sure that you uh, give us a call and, of course, and share your thoughts as well. Sorry, I beg your pardon, uh, on our Facebook pages this morning. So now, uh, Peggy, me and you have been chatting about this. Good morning mm -hmm. and thanks for Good joining morning. us. Thank you. Uh, that 85% number mm -hmm. is shocking. It is shocking. Um, and that is why we have this week to put the spotlight on that. Mm. Now, about 7% of our children are secured in seat, uh, car seats mm -hmm. in the vehicle. But the issue is that only about 20% of our children drive in pri private cars. Mm -hmm. The others use public, public transport. transport yeah. And public transport are excluded from the act. Mm -hmm. And um, the loading of children in vehicles has not been addressed yet. Mm. So if you load children under the age of three, there's no limitation mm. as long as you don't exceed the gross vehicle mass allowed for that vehicle. Kids between three and six, two kids count as a person. Mm. Okay. So a 13-seater public transport vehicle is not overloaded if there's 26 kids in it. Mm. And that is the next law that we need to seriously, seriously look at and address. No, so that's why we're finding like all these public tran uh, tr uh, school transporters yes. with so many children because yes. they're feeling what? They're not really breaking the law. They're not breaking the law. Goodness me. Mm -hmm. How did we get to that? I don't know. Because there's no regulation <laughs> around no, it. No. Okay. So, well, also joining us for our conversation uh, is uh, Michael Sun, who is uh, the Joburg uh, Public Safety MMC. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Great, thank you very much for, for being here. And if you get good to see you again. Good to see you again, Michael. <laughs> so we're talking this National uh, Child Passenger Safety Week. What is the significance uh, of this week? I, mean, I think it's, it's so much importance that uh, we need to understand that many of the parents or parents-to-be don't understand this is a necessity. It's an absolute uh, safety requirement. You know, some parents think, you oh, know, I'm having a new baby, I need to... A fancy child seat, you know, but um, uh, it's something that I don't really need. Mm. Uh, we spoke about it yesterday at our campaign yesterday mm -hmm. morning, and uh, we saw with our own eyes that there were just so many parents and drivers that didn't, didn't believe that they needed a child seat. Mm. Um, you know the scientific studies, you know, when you're holding a child in your arms in, in, in a seated position, mm. that child would fly, would like, fly a out, bullet, yeah. like a bullet. Mm. So it's uh, very important that. Um, we need to bring this awareness, we need to educate not only the, 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 the parents, but the children that we spoke to yesterday, mm. they realized that they want to be safe. So when we gave them this uh, child seat, you know, through the uh, assistance with uh, Dot Shua and uh, uh, Will, well, that, that they understand that there's something that they want. Mm. So we're very positive, we're very happy to be involved in the city of Johannesburg. We certainly want to go out and see more parents and more drivers understanding the importance of child safety on the road. Now, Peggy, you started Will Well. Just tell us uh, briefly uh, about it. What is, ab uh, what is ab uh, Will Well all about? Will Well is about road safety specifically for children because mm. children have very specific needs in a car, in and around vehicles. Um, we started in 2012 just as a campaign. I thought I'm going to do this quickly, get mm. it over and done with, carry mm. on with my life, but it didn't work out like that. Mm. I very soon realized the huge need there is for good information about car seats and uh, road safety for children and how many children died on our roads. As a parent who lost a child myself, I know how debilitating it is to mm. lose a child. It is not just sadness, you know, sometimes you're just incapable of living your life because it mm. just consumes you and nothing was done at that stage to even put the spotlight on it so will well was formed and um, we have our campaign called car seats for kids where we ask parents to donate their used seats to us 
we will weed out the ones that's not safe, that's been recalled and dangerous and all that. And mm. the ones that are good are cleaned, they're checked for safety, they're put together correctly, and then they go to parents who can't afford them new. Because mm. we want to see every child in every car in a car seat. And these are for parents who cannot afford to go and purchase. And often they come in for a baby seat and then there's a toddler of four years that needs to be in a booster seat. It's a financial outlay, mm, you know, mm, if, it's, mm. if it's just sprung upon you. Um, but we can only do this if people are can't hold it enough to donate their seats to us. So if they have any car seats in the garage gathering dust, that seat can do so much matter, better. It can so, so we'll get to that. But uh, mm. MMC, let's, let's just talk about um, where we find ourselves because majority of South African parents don't, don't necessarily have those car seats or those who have cars, uh, you know, it's big families with small cars, as she's, mm -hmm. uh, she's mentioned. Um, and a lot of them are using public transport. And these children are, you know, children are in these taxis every day going to, to, to school uh, or, or, or school transport. So we, we really have a situation where these, the children are really uh, not safe. How do we deal with that as, as, as a country, as a city in this case? Penny, you know, uh, about three weeks back, we had a very unfortunate incident where um, a scholar transport in Soweto were carrying, uh, you know, I would say overloaded with children. Mm. Um, the driver was drunk, 7 o'clock on, 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 on a Monday morning. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we saw the vehicle, the, 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 the combi literally smashed into a tree into two pieces. It's when you are at the hospital, you're seeing these helpless little bodies lying in the hospital bed waiting for surgery then you begin to understand the seriousness of you know child safety that we must take this very very seriously of course you know from from a, a public safety perspective you know a law enforcement uh, point of view we need to go out there and enforce this so we've gone out there and, and, and started a campaign in the city of Johannesburg to say that we really want to clamp down and say to these operators of Scholar Patrol that you need to comply mm. and you, you need to put safety first. And the campaign, obviously, we've rolled out, we've seen some successes, um, but you know, there are so many that um, it's also a very unregulated area of, uh, you know, our public transport. Mm. Um, I've seen video recordings that uh, people send to me, you know, we lost count of how many children got out of this combi. Mm. So it's something that uh, we've overseen for many, many years, but uh, we believe it's something that we need to do and, and act to it right now. And perhaps I can just add on to something about this. Charles, I must say, Peggy's doing mm. a, a sterling and remarkable job. Mm. Uh, something came up through our engagement yesterday. Mm -hmm. You could now go buy a brand new car. You could fit mag wheels. You could fit tinted windows. You could fit all the bells and yeah. whistles and get them financed through a bank. Mm. However, you know, that option is not really available, available for, for car seats. For car seats? Yes. Okay, so Peggy, earlier on you, you, you touched on about also just how children are just small builds, even for the very safety belts yes. that we're talking about. Yes. Yes. Now, a seat belt is designed for an adult of 1.5 meters and taller. Mm. So our kids are not there yet. Mm. It's like picking, putting adult shoes on your three-year-old. Mm. It doesn't fit. Mm. You know, they kick it off and they run along. Mm. So. Seat belts are, are for adults and car seats are made to, to make that seat belt fit the child mm. and keep them safe. But not only are they smaller in stature, they're more fragile in their bodies. Can't these coming effects just make built-in car seats? <laughs> 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 the, the, the problem is your child starts as a newborn that is tiny, tiny, tiny and vulnerable. And then in 12 years, they go well, through I know, so from many like zero, changes. You know, from like, okay, I, I'm just yes. thinking, I, I adhere to a car seat from like mm. zero to yeah. three, four. Mm. And then after that, yeah. you know, I'm like, okay, let's use the seatbelt. Yeah. But what you just told me today has got me worried. I'm thinking, yeah. my, my daughter is eight. Yeah. Does it mean I still need to have a seatbelt in the car? Yes, if she's under 1.5 meters tall. So they can, do, they can do a little test themselves. So they sit in the car. If their back is against the backrest, their knees bend over the front of the seat and their feet touch the ground. Yeah. The seat belt sits here on the strong part mm, of your yes. shoulder and over the top of your lap, not over the tummy. Vital organs, soft there. Okay. Over there. If they can say yes to all of that, they don't need to be in a booster seat. Well, we're going to have to leave it at that. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, guys. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, that Thank is uh, the right thing to do. Make sure that you protect your children if they're in the car. Here's a father who's standing by to bring us uh, the latest news making headlines. It is 7 o'clock and Mark Chase has got your stories.